BeastNet is brought to you by James Safety Services in partnership with OCR Bunny and OCR Strong. Here we discuss all things OCR and fitness related. Welcome to BeastNet. Hey everybody, it's Mike with BeastNet and today I got with me Marla. Marla, let the, the listeners know a little bit of who you are. Well, I live in Arizona, a beautiful state, and um, I'm 78 and I love my life. I love my lifestyle and I'm an avid, avid obstacle course racer. Um, so I don't let age deter me. Age is just a number. It is. It is just a number. So how many, I mean, I can see some of the medals behind you there in the, oh. the video. How many races have you done? Um, right up 400. No. And now here's the, the thought. When did you start racing? I started racing and did my first Spartan sprint uh, as a three-generation family in February of 2016. And I was 71 then. Okay. So you started Spartan at 71. Yes. See, and that's why you said age is just a number. So That is correct. Because it, it's just a number. So... You've done 400 of them. How, how has it been being able to do all those and to continue doing that? And how has that, I guess, kind of changed over the years? Well, considering I left the couch uh, or the bed, um, and I'd never run a mile in my life. Now, when I was younger, maybe into my early 30s, I played volley on volleyball leagues. I played uh, on a softball league, and I rode a bike. It was nothing for me to ride 10 miles, but um, that all changed when I moved to Arizona. Um, I needed to get out of Ari uh, Illinois, and so I ran to U-Haul with everything I had, packed it up, uh, came to Tucson, never been here, and didn't have a job, but I told the kids we're going to start over, and when I drove into town, it was, I love this place. So it was meant to be. So I really didn't do anything um, as far as activity or exercise. You know, I was working three jobs, and so it was, there wasn't time. Mm -hmm. Then the kids all grew up. Now they're in their 40s and 50s, and they, I was kind of like an empty nest, and I had gone, and I could babysit the kids. My son and his friends called the Hopalong Gang. They did all these races, so I would sit there. I remember at a Tough Mudder and think, and move along the course to the obstacles, and I think, well, shoot, I can crawl in mud under barbed wire. And, you know, there's some things like the monkey bars I can't do because of my hands. But there were so many things that I thought, well, I can do that. And so I told my son, I signed up for a Spartan Sprint. And he was going, Mom, you don't run. And I said, well, I probably can't run, but I'll do a granny trot. So I thought I was really something before that first Spartan uh, because I could go out and walk and do a granny trot out, out there um, on the on the trails near my home. And so I do a half a mile and think, wow, I can do this. And he kept saying, you know, you need to train more. And I said, oh, OK. And eventually I got up to a mile and then it was time for that first Spartan sprint. And I, my, I had a incredible, fun, uh, energizing race. And until you can get out there on a race course and see the camaraderie with everyone, they help you with the obstacles. There's laughter. There's no negative. It's all positive. It's a family affair. Mm -hmm. um, and, and explaining that to other people. Um, it is sometimes difficult because it, it's a different lifestyle. It, you know, you're uh, you can have seven thousand people at a race, and 
yet everybody's getting along. The kids are running around with their medals. And, you know, it's whether we're hurting and limping or whatever we're doing after a race, I just felt that energy. And so I would say, well, where's your next race? And they would tell me, so I'd go home and sign up for it. And that started, I think I did eight races. I believe I did one or either the five mile or 10 mile Tough Mudder that year. And so, and then there was a lot of, um, how do I say this? There's a lot of obstacle course races that aren't as uh, complicated or as hard as Spartan or Tough Mudder. Mm -hmm. And so I did some of those. But that was that was basically my start. And that's awesome. I mean, it's one of those things. And I mean, you usually hear like that where someone just sees someone else doing it. And they're like, I want to try that. And what's great about Spartan and, you know, obstacle course racing in general is no one cares about how old you are or anything like that. If you need help over that wall, all right, let's go. You know, and that and that is I love the camaraderie of it. Um yeah, that's amazing. So so you've been doing it for a couple of years and then I know things have changed a little bit for you because I mean, I've been with you two weekends now in a row or two weekends. Um, one that didn't go as well as we wanted it to, but we're going to get, we're going to, we're going to fix that. And then one that was for a lot of the listeners know I've, I've actually been kind of on my way out of OCR. I, I I didn't, I wasn't enjoying it as much anymore. I had lost that love of OCR. Um, and I will tell you the two weekends I've spent with you, that love is back. Aww, it it re-energized you. to see you go for it and the camaraderie that, you know, uh, of everyone made me, you know, reminded me of why I loved OCR. So, um, and I'll kind of tell the listeners what, you know, I mean, the, the last year or so has been for you and how we came to be for the races that we just did. Do you want me to tell or you want to tell it? <laughs> I mean, you, I, I want to hear from your words. I mean, cause I know you've had some issues, some medical issues and everything that made it a little more difficult and that you had some goals. And because of those medical issues, those goals were, were not as, did not seem attainable. The, what, since I started at 71, I've had 10 surgeries, uh, three on my back. I tore the meniscus in my knee. And so I had to have that replaced last December, but I still raced last, uh, in February, um, but the total of 10 plus two cataract surgeries. So I want I want the listeners to know, you know, people tell me I I can't do what you do. My back hurts. I have arthritis. My knee hurts. And <laughs> it, it I want them to get off the couch and see how much better they feel, how much more they can move. And in a, in a summary, all these surgeries that I had, they, I would get antsy, maybe three or four days. I was really good, did everything I was supposed to do. Don't, you know, do anything hard. And then I got antsy, but I also would be stiff. It was, okay, I don't want to stand anymore. I'm going to go lay down in my bed. And then, oh, I'm going to take the dogs outside or go out and sit in my uh, porch and enjoy. I have a beautiful view of the mountains here, and I'm next to federal land. So it gives me so much peace. But I realized it was difficult to go up and down the stairs on the porch and how much stiffer I got. And even though my pain level has uh, increased greatly the last two years, I realized I can't just give in to it. I cannot just say, oh, well, I can't do it anymore. That That's just not me. And so I had a spinal cord implant put in 
And that kept my pain on a scale of one to 10 to a five or six. And so I was good. You know, everything was, you know, a lot better. The pain was less. And so I said, okay. But the, uh, particularly this year, has been really hard and towards the end of last year. And I would imagine most people wouldn't still go out and try to get seven or six trifectas. This year, my goal was eight. But the pain I was in at the end was beyond the one to 10 scale. It was 14. And <clears throat> I kept digging through it, but any medicine I would take um, just didn't help anymore. It was too intense. So I knew I didn't want to slow down this year. And yet when I get, you know, get back to the hotel room or after the race, I was so sore. And um, sometimes I got a little teary eyed, quite honestly, but it, it seems like I was blessed with the high pain tolerance. And for that, I am very, very thankful. What's going on now? And in fact, in 10 or 11 days, I'm going to have some really major back surgery. And that's really what's been causing this intense pain. Um, the, uh, the problem was in the last year or so that if I fell, the doctors told me that I could be paralyzed. And I said, oh, okay. And now this sounds dumb, but I kind of waved that off. It's always in the back of my mind. But I waved it off and said, you know what? I love my life. I love my lifestyle. Thank goodness Spartan and other obstacle course races are in my life. You know, uh, I, I'm i sorry. It's it's really hard sometimes to talk about it, but from my thoracic, and it's expanded to two more vertebrae, from my the last uh, vertebrae in my thoracic down to the first one, and I think it's uh, the sacia or the tailbone area, that mm -hmm. first one, my discs are all pushing out from my vertebrae to the left, and so the vertebrae on the right side are all touching and therein lies lies where this pain's coming from plus uh in the last year or so the um the disc between l4 and l5 it's nothing and those vertebrae look like a bunch of mush in there you know they're mm -hmm. uh just what do i want to say they're just uh deteriorating now i've got an artificial neck I had that done a few years ago. My spine collapsed there. And, you know, I was determined and did exercises and said, okay. And I have full function of it right now. The other um, deals I've been dealing with, particularly this year, is my feet. The arthritis has gotten so bad, I cannot like put on a boot like I used to wear, you know, the boots mm -hmm. I wear to ride horses. And then <laughs> the arthritis in my toes, um, I'm basically walking on the tips of my toes because my joints all bend up. So um, I I knew in June, and I this sounds crazy, but I wanted to do the ultra. And then World's Toughest Mudder came up. And then there's the Phoenix race. And I thought, oh, I'm still going to Florida in December. And so I put my surgery off. But I, I knew in the condition I was that I didn't need to do Sebring. And I do want to do a memorial run for a very good friend who passed away. He His wish was, I want to do one more Spartan. And so we were all a bunch of us were all going to go and do the spread here in Arizona. Uh, I don't know what it is, 18th and 19th, I think. Mm -hmm. So uh, running and my feet felt feeling like they were on fire. How did I do the Seattle trifecta weekend? I look back at it and think, oh, but the, the pain memories aren't there. 
I know I really struggled, you know, with it. But I think if you're determined and you have this lifestyle that involves moving, because if I don't, then I can't move. I've defied the odds of being at 55 or 60 with the doctor saying, you're going to be in a wheelchair. Well, I've defied those odds. And I really do credit it with my love of, you know, obstacle course racing. That's amazing. That's awesome. So most people, I mean, just to say it honestly, most people would have given up, which to me is amazing that you're like, no, I'm, I'm doing this anyway, you know, um, which to me is awesome. I mean, I, I love that. I love your drive and like, and everything else. So, so the first time I got to meet you in person was the ultra, um, <laughs> which like we said, did not go as, <laughs> as planned, did not go as planned. Um, that was a brutal race trying to get through a lot of that stuff with the, the, the chair and everything else. That was a brutal race. Um, yeah, but we're, yeah, we're going to make well, up for it. <laughs> the, the, the ultra and, and it's just that this was at the same location as it was last year. Mm-hmm. And I did the beast. I don't remember if I did a trifecta weekend or not, but it was, we didn't even touch one inch of that course from last year. This was just, if you ever looked at the map or somebody's watch that showed where they ran, it was just uh, like a maze. It was crazy. And all it was, was going over rocks, sliding down a three foot boulder to get down. It was you know, on an incline, as soon as you got on top, you went back down and then you curved around in the creek. And it was, it was, it was brutal. It really was. Mm-hmm. Um, and I told you guys, I was disappointed. Of course, I had tears. Um, but it is what it is. You know, it's <clears throat> now we, now we know. Yeah. And I mean, we were disappointed too. We really wanted to get you that buckle. You know, like I said, we, we, we have a plan, right. To, to, to make up for it. We're going to get it. It's just going to be the spring of next year. We Um, are. And, you know, I, I really, I, I'm going to tell you uh, from deep inside, you know, I'm embarrassed uh, to some degree. Um, Mm -hmm. But I know that my body's done. And I'm emotionally done with the pain. And I knew that I couldn't do it. I I, I couldn't do it. Even though I walked most of it, mm-hmm. which, you know, in a sense, I'm pretty proud because that was oh, a I'm brutal good. course. But, um, you know, it is what it is. Those that know me, if they look at me, there's like, well, there's nothing wrong with her. Well, yeah, it probably, you know, doesn't show, I think. You know, if you look now as we're as we're doing this podcast, my right shoulder is way lower than my left. And this is because I have scoliosis and it's gotten worse. So that's complicating issues with my back, with where it comes down the thoracic and to try to get something straight or um, kind of what I call give me a new back here in you know, 10 or 11 days, Um, you know, that's, that's into it too. So there's, everything's involved in the last probably three months. Now, um, even today, I tried painting some, uh, the porch, and I like now the pain shooting down from my sciatic nerve all the way down to my ankle. But, you know, I don't look like this is all you know, affecting, I don't want sympathy. Um, but it was very hard and probably hurt my pride to even say, I need you guys to be there by me. And, um, you know, as a team to help me. And I knew enough that, you know, it's pretty bad right now. And should I put off the surgery? Probably not. But, you know, I'm kind of stubborn. So I wanted 
I said, well, let's do it October, uh, November 20th. And I knew in June, but I just, I just didn't want to give up. So my goal, uh, do the uh, Spartan weekend here in Arizona in February. Yeah. Can I, will I be able to do it? Um, yes. Doctors mm -hmm. probably going to say, eh, I don't know about that, but. You know, what are they I, I'm determined. <laughs> It's and that's what amazes me. I mean, you, you just you keep going, you have that determination. Um, a lot of people, you know, like we said, we we assisted you on both, you know, and we'll talk about WTM in a minute, but we assisted you on, you know, the the ultra and everything else. But I don't think people realize you weren't in the chair the whole time. You maybe, I mean, especially on the ultra, maybe I would say 50% of the time. I mean, oh, I it, you, was well, that. it was probably 75 yeah. because there was just no way you guys could get me up uh, those rocks on the yeah, end. Rocks. Yeah. And, you know, it was at the point where somebody kind of grabbed my shirt and said, come on, we'll help you. And it was inclines are very painful for me. Uh, that's my downfall. But mm -hmm. you guys were there, you know. Um, but I just had to swallow some pride for that and and for the world's toughest mutter this last weekend. Yeah. So, I mean, that that was the ultra. And like we said there, there we didn't quite finish that one, but we're going to get that one next. And then there was world's toughest. And this was my first time. I've never been to world's toughest. I had never gone. I was supposed to do it. I mean, I don't know if you saw, I had the picture on um, the yes. front of my, um, that was a really good friend of mine who actually used to be another host on this show. She was a host on this show. Um, the Canadian host on this show. Um, she was an amazing person. Me and her were supposed to do world's toughest in 2020, but then we all know what happened in 2020. Everything got shut down. And then unfortunately um, she passed away earlier this year. So that's kind of was my, you know, I was helping you, but at the same time I made sure charity was with me for the whole time. So that was a, it was a very emotional race for me for multiple reasons. But well, and it, it was it was for me because my son's done several in his friends' uh, World's Toughest Mudder. And Tim Leary, you know, was always on the pit crew. One year he won it. I don't know the amount of miles, but he did two or three five-mile laps. And for him to you know, pass away, you know, even though, you know, he was in so much pain from the cancer and everything, but, you know, at night, you know, we were on top of that one hill and, and I looked up and there was that one bright star. If you remember, we were looking mm -hmm. at the stars and, you know, I knew he, I knew he, he was um, up there, you know, so it, it's really hard, but I, 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 I think Tim was there from up above, you know? Yeah. And I think the same with charity. And I mean, that's one of the things I think why sometimes these races mean so much to us. We've gained so much extra family, but every once in a while we lose some, and then we go out there. And for me, this was a remembrance. Um, I never wanted to do a tough mutter and charity was the first person to talk me into it because I never, I don't like electric shock at all so I didn't want to do it and she finally talked me into it so it's just kind of we had this whole history with Tough Mudder and you know I, I finally got to do World's Toughest unfortunately without her but I mean I had her with me the whole time and like you said I mean I, I when we were looking up at the stars I had the same feeling that Charity was up there looking down on me and it was it was an amazing feeling but yeah you know, it was very emotional race. And I mean, like I said, it was so great to be there and to be there with you. So what was your, I mean, tell everyone about World's Toughest from, from your point of view. Well, I, I never thought I could do it actually, you know, I would, I would stay up most of the night, you know, following the live feed to know where my son or I'd look up everybody I knew was racing are doing it and you know to see where they were but i i i just never thought 
that in my 70s, I could do it. It was a race that, you know, I was so proud of my son and, and being on the on the wall of fame, um, you know, several times. So I just put that thought away until this summer. And, you know, I got that email and said, you know, we want you to do World's Toughest. And I'm like, oh, okay. And, you know, okay, I'm doing World's Toughest. And then I got with Joey and I had talked to Dan McDonald and I said, I'm going to need help, you know, because two weeks after that is my surgery. And, and it's been, it, it's been deteriorating. I know it. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, so I said, okay. So I, I knew stuff that my son had taken. And um, so I went and got the big box and cleaned up the, um, the dry robe, sleeping bag, sleeping mats, everything that you take. So the long and the short was I didn't get really nervous because I kind of understood what what was involved in the pit crew and everything. Mm -hmm. And Joey said, well, we'll have a tent for you. And then I've got a team lined up for, you know, with uh, more hearts and scars to go with you. You know, I, so I did it. I mean, I kind of went into it, not blind, but not really knowing the full effects until you got on that course. So this yeah. summer, I said, well, I'm going to do 15 miles. I want to get 15 miles. And then Joey and I were chatting, I don't know, sometime later in the summer or September. And I said, well, here's my dream. I want 15 miles. That's three five-mile laps. And then I said, but you know, my dream would really be doing 25 miles, going out on five, the five mile laps, you know, um, five times and five times. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, I said, that would be my dream. Well, we did that. And it was like one or one o'clock or so in the morning when we completed um, the 25 miles and I got my vest. And at that point, and you guys were dragging, everybody was sore, limping, you know, leg spasms. I mean, and out on the course, you saw so many people limping or walking or, mm -hmm. you know, in some cases laying down because it is, you're just going from one mud obstacle to the other obstacle. And then what happens is everybody's so wet from all the mud and everything that um, it, it starts to drop. So all the dry places on the first lap or second lap have now just extended beyond that obstacle. And the whole course ended up Sunday morning with being uh, uh, muddy and the rocks were very slick. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it, I, well, the 25 miles got to me the bib, but I said to Joey, do you think we could do one more lap? And I'm going to tear up here. And so I can wear my 25 mile bib. And he said, yes. So, you know, we were all tired and sore, but I think more hearts and scars so much, you know, for doing it with me. Um, get me up those obstacles and and everything and at one point I wanted people I've always wanted to inspire people to get them off the couch mm -hmm. and I I felt they need to know what more hearts and scars is and with my hiking sticks because that takes the pressure of all my weight off of my back you know we cross the finish line and I was, I don't know what lap it was, maybe 15 or five, three or four. And every lap when we get there, you go across the finish line, walk away, 
start again under the start uh, arch and you go out and do your other five, uh, five mile laps. But I said, Dan, all I want to do is inspire people. And he said, Marla, don't you see before the finish line all the way past the start line? I, I didn't look up because I was looking on the ground where I was going. But he, you know, there were people there that were lined up shoulder to shoulder and just completely cheering us on as soon as they saw us come around that one corner heading to the finish line. And I think what I'm proudest about is that they, I don't know, even know if they knew who I was, quite honestly. I mean, nothing was ever said, but I, I was hoping that they would understand what more hearts than scars actually does when they take an adaptive athlete out there. You know, so I'm hoping all the video cameras that were running all along there, that it really shows up what more hearts and scars did because there was no way I could have done. I probably could have done 15 miles, but not the 30 miles that we did. Yeah. Which, I mean, it was amazing. But a lot of people don't know, too, is like we said, you walk a bit. You you walk. Um, and then there's also, I mean, you still did the obstacles. There was a couple that because of, you know, your, your medical conditions, we couldn't do. But we had those conversations beforehand. And most of the obstacles, if you couldn't do them, usually one of us from the team went and did it. Right. So we still had at least someone from the team doing it. But, I mean, you did a lot of them yourself. I mean, there's, you went up and over Matterhorn. Oh, um, I love that one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you did a bunch of them. So, I mean, you you did amazing. But, I mean, we had an amazing team with us, too. I mean, everyone yes, did great. Did. And Michelle and Savannah in the, you know, as our, our helpers or the, the pit crew were amazing. You know, well, and yeah. then. You oh. know, they had stuff ready for us when mm -hmm. we, you know, after a lap, you know, um, I I had put down, I want hot tea, you know, like after lap three or something like that. And then when we broke there, right as, it, what was it? We broke right before dark or at dusk to all kind of really go on and eat. But they had stuff ready for us, you know, yeah. there in, in the tents for the pit crew. And we couldn't have had a better pit crew than, than Michelle and Savannah. No, they did amazing. And then, I mean, the team that we had with us too, I mean, Henry was a horse the whole time. He just, he just kept going. And, you know, I mean, you know, and then Dan, of course, Dan McDonald, Joey, Joey's, he's the one who puts all this together and does so good. You know, Tim, the crazy old man, <laughs> but, you know, Michael, and then, you know, Amanda, Amanda was amazing. Jonathan was oh, amazing. Yes. So, and you then know, you had... The spirit of it, you know, mm -hmm. is is what I'm hoping touched everyone that was there. You know, I don't need the attention that much, but more hearts and scars really, really does deserve a lot of attention. And I hope people look up online who they are and what they do, mm -hmm. um, be because all of you are incredible. You know, and I've seen you with adaptive athletes at Spartan races, you know, so I was familiar with that, but I didn't expect it to be such a team thing that without speaking, you know, I started to get out of the wheelchair. This somebody would go over by the like the Dublin wall or something or Matterhorn where I had to, you know, have help up the woodside, but it just flowed so smoothly. And mm -hmm. and I hope that other people, whatever their disability is, whether it's autism or spina bifida, they can do these races and get a recharge of, you know, looking back at something that they've done that is so memorable. I mean, the cheers out there on the course, uh, the, you know, somebody saying, oh, you guys inspire me. Good job. I mean, nobody, if, if they've never done a race, they don't understand, you know, no. what the quote unquote family is. No. And like I said, the, these two races really reminded me. And I mean, I don't know if you can tell the picture behind me, but. I have to put my is, glasses. 
Oh, that that is because oh. I usually had the flag, so I was a little bit behind the group and yelling, you know, telling racers which side to go to. And as the sun was setting, I saw this, and I'm like, I need a picture of that. So oh, I got a picture, yeah. and that was us helping you. So that was that was as the sun was setting on Saturday night. That one and the other favorite picture is either is it wasn't the tw- uh, 30, uh, 30 mile, maybe the 25, where we were all coming across the finish line and it made the highlight reel at the awards luncheon Monday. Mm-hmm. But it had us all coming across there and Henry has his, you know, fist up in the air, you know, but yeah, it meant a lot to do that. So, yeah, I mean, it was, it was for me and I'll be honest, I had a, the ultra was the first time I ran with the team. So ah. it was very nice for me to finally see. And like you said, I wasn't aware of how well, I mean, once we all get in there, we all just kind of you figure out where to go really quick you know what your your role is and for us it's all about you it's all about the athlete we're there for you and that was the one thing like for me i mean you know when people are talking about um being there for you and everyone's like oh what do you do when she's not running oh, we don't run we're, we're there we're only on course we only do we're there for marla and for me that was it it was i was the whole race i was there for you and that was it. I mean, and that's what that's what more heart than scar is. And like I said, it was really amazing to see an entire team that that was the attitude. It it was and no words were spoken, you know, but there were still the smiles, the happy look, mm-hmm. you know, but everybody just fell into place. If I needed an extra push to get over a wall. You know, uh, Henry was the uh, tallest one, so Mm -hmm. he always helped. But it was moments like that where you don't have to say, can somebody help me, you know, push me over this wall? It was just an unknown thing. It was an automatic, you know, you didn't have to say that. And and I'm forever grateful for that. Yeah. And, you know, if you want to do more races anytime you want, I'm sure, you know, we'll be there for you anytime. You know, I mean, that's one thing I'm happy about. I moved to Texas. I live in Houston now, so I can get to the East Coast a lot easier than I could from Seattle. So, you know, and that's one of the things I wanted to do was spend more time helping with the team and stuff like that, because that's why I started racing to begin with. I I love the family. I love being out there with my friends and the look and the, the joy on your face when we cross for that 25 miles and you got the the bib um it was amazing and it was a little teary-eyed <laughs> i i mean i'm getting teary-eyed just in remembering it because i mean the look on your face and just how the joy of you getting that when you never thought you would and that i mean that's that's my whole that's my purpose now i i want to i want to see that look and help people get that look well, remember, always remember all those cheers. I mean, every time, mm-hmm. you know, and I don't know how long a distance it was, but it was quite a ways, you know. You know, they'd see the team and the cheers, you know, for what you guys do. And I think, you know, that goal, I hope, um, will become very frequent in the future. And have more teams and more um, adaptive athletes out there because it, to say no, you're giving up something so wonderful that you don't even know about. But it's it's the atmosphere, and yes. to hear the cheering, and I hope the publicity about more hearts and scars, you know, goes on, and you know whether whether someone has autism or you know, I've raced a couple, three times with people that, and once was at the World Championship, Spartan World Championship in, in in Tahoe. I did that World Championship race three times. But th- there was a young man, and we're coming down off that first mountain, and he had spina bifida. And he had braces on his shoes, and he had his crutches. And they were killing him. But 
he wasn't going to give up. You know, we'd already been the top. So, mm -hmm. and then some people were a little impatient behind and they wanted to go around. And I said, hey, guys, you know, you've got, you know, a, a handicapped person right there that is doing far more work than we are. You know, if you can wait just a couple minutes till we get through this. And it was a very narrow trail through some boulders. And so you really couldn't go anywhere else but that. But I was so proud of him. I was so proud of the, the young lady at 14, you know, with autism to do the race with me. Um, but people just have to know, you know, Maybe they're not, they're going slow, but you don't know what's underneath that. Why are they going slow? You know, there's, there's many disabilities mm -hmm. that, um, you know, aren't recognizable in somebody, you know, unless they're really, they're really doing a pity me thing, but, um, you know, give them credit. He was out there. So he slowed you down for a little bit. It wasn't that long, you know, no. and I'm hoping that at this weekend proved and inspired, you know, other people to get out there and adaptive athletes. And, you know, you're welcomed with open arms. And I really hope it, it, that the publicity of More Hearts and Scars um, continues to, you know, widen because this group needs needs so much recognition for what they do. I agree. I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing what they do. And I mean, there was a lot of people that I saw them coming up to you. They came up to us just talking about how, how inspired they were. Uh, I know there was one lady who came up and said that her, I, I don't know if it was her sister or somebody that was with them was in a wheelchair and they're like, I never thought I could do this, but now watching you, I know I can, you know, and that was, that's amazing to me. Where someone's like, I never thought this was possible. And then they see you out there and they're like, oh, no, it is. It is possible. They just have to talk to the right people. Yeah. You know, a disability shouldn't handicap you from enjoying or accomplishing things that you, you know, you never knew you could do. You know, but with a, a team like More Hearts and Scars, you know, they can do it. And and I, I, I'm hoping that we inspired a lot of people there, you know, not, you know, I don't know if the word spread or what we did, but I'm really hoping that I'm it hoping to. Yeah. And like I said, I, I know a lot of people, I think, and that was one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you on and talk to you. I mean, I think a lot of people know about more heart than scars, but I don't know if they know exactly what you know, more heart than scars is all about. And I was hoping that, you know, having you on here and I mean, talking about what it really is and what it does. And I mean, it's anybody who wants to go out and do it. And I mean, it's those invisible scars, like you mentioned, whether it be scars just, just aren't seen or, you know, mental scars, physical scars, whatever they are. I mean, we're here. I mean, more heart than scars, beast net, you know, all of us are here. To, to help whoever needs it. Well, and you consider this strong, and we're off Tough Mudder, but the military presence and the basis for Spartan and the number of disabled veterans that go out mm -hmm. and do these races and the invisible ones with PTSD or, you know, suicide, this is, this the whole obstacle racing world, uh, if somebody is going down and they see someone post, maybe PTSD is taking them down, you know, a deep hole. Everybody, even if and when they live in the same state, uh, go, hey, buddy, I'm only two hours away. I'll come help. And that's that's what this worldwide family does in mm -hmm. in scars that in um uh a spartan and i think that's what keeps me going it's you know it's it's fun it's caring it's positive the only place there is you know all over the world when these races occur 
you know, and getting up now, Spartan sitting 7,000 plus at a, at a race weekend. You know, I think it's, it's so awesome that that many people are, are going for this lifestyle and just keeping going. I, I, I am so grateful that I had this crazy idea to do one Spartan and it was going to be one and done. And of course we all laugh and say, Mm -hmm. well, we're one and done because you, you have so much fun. There's people to help you if you're not a competitor for money or for podium, but you, there's so many people out there that will help you strangers. It doesn't matter if you know them, you know, say please. And then when they're done, say thank you. And you know, it's, It's an automatic thing and you feel so welcomed and you're never alone. And I think people need to realize that, you know, and 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 I'm I'm, sorry, I'm, you know, I am, I am embarrassed, um, you know, that I had to go to it, but physically um, and with the pain level, just that little painting I did today. Uh, now my pain levels way up there. So, you know, I've cut some races out, but that's okay. That's didn't okay. go to. I didn't go to uh, Trifecta Weekend in California. Instead, I went to World's Toughest Mudders. So, hmm. I'll get well, my a, tri- more trifectas next year. There's a good one. We're gonna get an ultra factor next year, right? Yeah. well that's what i'm hearing <laughs> that's what i'm that's what i'm hearing too so but we're gonna do everything we can to make you know help you and, and assist you in any way we can um like you said it's an amazing community that's one thing that i some people know like my my training partner i have here and you know where i live in houston now we randomly met on an ultra two years ago and i lived in seattle she lived in in houston and randomly met and now all of a sudden I live down here close to her and me and her that's my training partner you know so it's just kind of you you never know who you're going to meet out there so well I was you know I want to shout out to Dan McDonald um for one you know his he you know his title at Spartan is incredible I don't know how he does it I know he's working 12 plus 14 hours a day And so hats off to him for taking the time to join more hearts and scars Mm -hmm. and do this. But I also want to give a shout out to Joy uh, McLemory because he's the one that organizes all of this. If somebody wants to race, we need a team. He may, you know, this weekend, somebody was doing an ultra. There was a group that went over to Greece to do the world championship trifecta Mm -hmm. uh, weekend there. And I think there was a beast. Okay. Me. And then they went to Greece and I want the, everyone to know that more hearts and scars is, is a nonprofit group. These people that go out with the adaptive athletes, they don't get paid. They volunteer their time. The expense to get to and from the race is on them. And so a big kudos to this organization and uh, the volunteers, uh, you know, that including you, um, that go out and give their time. Uh, You know, it's it needs to be it needs to be respected and acknowledged, you know, and I'm hoping this past weekend that it will help, you know, um, get attention for a group of people who don't get paid to do what they do. Yeah. Well, we get paid. We get paid and seeing the joy that, that we get from watching you guys who normally wouldn't be able to do this to do it. Um, and I'll be honest, that was enough payment for me just to see, like I said, the, when you got that 24, that 25 mile bib was amazing to me. Cause it was one of those things when we were first talking, it was going to be, we, you were going to get the 25 in the morning when we did the victory, there was going to be the victory lap. Right. And then as it, as the night progressed, we just kept going. And then it's like, well, why don't we just get the 25 miles tonight? And then we'll do a victory lap in the morning. So what you what you started with saying you wanted fifteen, we got you thirty. So. Exactly. 
Well, it was a little selfish, but for me, oh my gosh, I'm a, um, emotionally, to be able to go from 15 miles to 25, maybe, and then 30, um, you know, I just, I guess, emotionally needed, I wanted to wear that bib one last uh, five mile lap. To say, hey, we did this. And, um, you know, maybe it was for me too, but we all did it. You know, I mean, most of us, why do we get even lay down, what, at two o'clock in the morning and we're back up at six? So, you know, it meant a lot, you know. And, and I'm sorry I couldn't have walked more at night, but it got so oh. slick. You it know, was so slick. Yeah, no. And I, with my eye disease, I couldn't, my left eye was completely blurry, so I couldn't really see. And, and you know, I apologized to Joey. I said I I wanted to walk more, but I knew for safety that, you yeah. know, I shouldn't do it. But I wish it, I could. It's like you said, once we got left to like the second or third lap, um, so many people coming out of the water and dripping. It was the whole course, the whole five miles was wet. And once it got dark and you couldn't see, that was, yeah, that was one of the, our concerns too, is it was so muddy and so slick. And yeah, we're like, no, no, we don't, <laughs> oh, we don't want uh, you to fall. Uh, you know, who was it? Jason? Which Somebody one? said they went over into the bushes once and there was these green eyes. Um other people said there was a deer and then somebody said they also saw a turkey out there after dark so uh, oh. now we know now we've solved that puzzle of what kind of animal was it so wow oh. yeah i saw i saw a deer earlier in the day but i didn't see one at night so but well i All believe right. that he saw two green eyes so okay okay it was the aliens they hang out <laughs> out there lizard people who knows they I mean, it is Texas. You never know what's out there. So, well, Marla, thank you for coming on. Um, is there anything you want to say to the listeners before we 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 go? Just don't ever say I could never do that. You know, um, there's so many possibilities out there. And and I think my doctors tell me all the time, you know, you you heal so fast, you're so healthy. And I truly am. It's just my body's falling apart. But don't let that stop you. You might feel better. And, you know, I'm a firm believer that staying active like this and walking is good for you, no matter how far. But just get off the couch and enjoy the outside, the fresh air. and you know, feel blessed that you've been able to get up one more day and just enjoy life, you know. Don't let pain or discom discomfort stop you from doing something because if you don't try it, you, you never know if you could or you can't. So um, that's the biggest thing for me is people saying, oh, I can't do that. Well, you don't know until you, know. you try so all right well thank you marla for coming on here and i can't wait to see you again and do another race well it will be <laughs> this one's this one's probably gonna make me um less um agile yeah. so to speak to fix everything but you know i have complete faith and if if i'm more limited in my agility then okay just the way it is. It's just another obstacle to overcome. There you go. All right. Well, thank you, Marla, and I will I will talk to you soon. All right. Thank you All for right. having me. Oh, yeah, All you're right. welcome. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thanks for listening to the BeastNet podcast. If you haven't done it yet, find us on Facebook. Like and share the podcast. Give us a review on iTunes or Spotify. All these things will help to expand the show in the future. Don't forget to subscribe and let us know what you think and what you'd like to hear. Yeah.